Hey guys, how is it going? Welcome back to another Shadowverse video. I'm Furo and today I want to present to you another Shadowverse deck. So the last expansion, Chronogenesis, was released last week and over the weekend we have seen the effect of this expansion on the new format rotation and on the unlimited format. And so far it looks like that in the rotation format we have two kind of top tier decks which is the mid-range shadowcraft deck and the ramped dragoncraft deck there's some other good stuff like a dirt runecraft deck but these are the decks that you will face quite quite often on the ladder especially the mid-range shadowcraft deck and that's why today i want to show you the deck and uh, the reason why the deck is so strong right now is that in rotation the game is a bit slower so there's not any hyper aggressive deck out there right now most of the decks are mid-range so um, the mid-range Shadowcraft deck is one of the best mid-range decks right now in the game. And it is so because of the very versatile playstyle. Uh, some nice nice finishers in uh, the form of the Mortal Thane and the Demon Lord Ishtar here. And also it's very resilient because you are summoning a lot of zombies on the board. You're summoning a lot of skeletons on the board. The skeletons are just summoning more skeletons on the board. So you kind of always have something on the board that will stick there. And because you have something that is sticking, um, all your other cards will allow you to constantly push damage in the face and constantly have something for a trade. So that's, that's very powerful. That's why I think over the last 20 games or so that I've played on Master, uh, probably around 10 of those were at least Shadowcraft. Then second most played is a Ramp Dragoncraft, but that's kind of it right now. Uh, the reason also for the rise of Shadowcraft is kind of in this new card Skullring here. That's a pretty cool one. Counter Amulet 2, Fanfare, Summon 2 Skeletons, which is very nice for you. And last words, Necromancy 2, Reanimate 2. And Reanimate is a new keyword introduced in Chronogenesis. And Reanimate 2 means that um, if you use the Necromancy 2 effect here, you can or you will reanimate a unit, so resummon a unit that is costing two or less that was killed early on this game. So if you then, for example, start with the Balanos here, you play the Skull Ring, you have then some Skeleton on the board, and then you can just, at the Necromancy 2 effect, you can resummon the Balanos if that was the only creature that was killed early in this game. So that's pretty powerful, allows you to just have more units on the board. Another card that allows you to have more units on the board is the Skeleton Prince. That's also a new card from Chronogenesis, a gold card, costing you six, having two, three in stats, and Fanfare, you will summon a Skeleton Knight. Last word, summon a Skeleton. So the Skeleton Prince alone is summoning a Skeleton, but also the Skeleton Knight will summon a Skeleton. So you will have two units on the board when you play the Skeleton Prince. And after that, when your opponent is trading, you still have two Skeletons on the board. So there's always something for you um, to take advantage of. And plus, because of the game overall is getting slower on rotation, you can be very greedy. So we are running three Andre Alphas here, which allows you as a Evolve, give all of your followers in your hand last words, draw a card. He has draw a card as well. So if you play him on two and then evolving a bit later or play him on three whatsoever, if you evolve him then and you have four or five units in your hand, these all are getting the draw effect. And with that, you're just refilling your hand constantly. You are bumping stuff on the board constantly. So that's very hard for your opponent to get rid of and that's why the deck is so powerful at the moment. And because you will face so, so many um, mirror matches, I right now have one black swan here in the deck. Black swan, fanfare, summon an enemy or dead white spawn, then evolve this follower. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to all enemies if he's evolved. She's evolved, it's a, it's a girl, right? So um, if you play her in a mirror match and your opponent has a board full of skeletons, then of course, first of all, he's not getting the white swan. And second of all, because most of the Shadowcraft followers are very small, so skeletons, zombies, right? These are very small, so if you deal two damage to all enemies at the end of your turn, the chance to really kill everything is super, super high. So that's why this is a great card right now because of all the mirror matches that you will face. Uh, if you're not facing that many mirror matches um, again, then you can just drop the card and play triple Immortal Thane. Immortal Thane right now is uh, one hell of a finisher as well, but I just wanted to have one black swan. That's why I'm just running two Immortal Thanes. And of course, for the end game, you also have the Demon Lord, which allows you to either summon two zombies if you have Necromancy 8, and you will give all other allied followers plus two and rush until the end of the turn because you always have something on the board. And this one allows you to finish the game or to trade goodly. 
Also, um, when we are talking about finishers, there is another card incoming from the latest expansion, the new legendary Underworld Ruler Aisha. This is kind of your finisher, I'll just have a one, it's in the deck, but it's a great great card, costing 5, 5 foreign stats, rush, but guess what? The, the real cool stuff is coming when you have the fanfare effect Necromancy 10, then you can evolve this follower if you evolve. Uh, he can or she can attack twice per turn and then if you also have the enhanced 10 you will gain storm so that means you kind of want to play this card when you have 10 shadows in your graveyard then you can evolve this follower for free so she can attack twice and then if you play it on turn 10 that will allow you to get a storm so that is then 10 damage directly in the face so really really great finisher to um, really kill your opponent it's 10 in the face and that's half of the life points in total so all in all you have decent early stuff, you have a very silent board situation for you, there's always something on the board and you have some impactful, impactful finishers that will just, this will just seal the deal, so there's nothing your opponent can do then. And that's why the Midrange Shadowcraft deck is an all in all very good package right now. Um, I would expect that because the win rate and the, the play amount is right now that high with Midrange Shadowcraft, there is a decent chance that some of the cards will get changed. So if you are looking for some free wilds, you should craft a few of the cards. So uh, the Demon Lord might get changed. We will see. Um, Immortal Thane is right now very strong. Skeleton Prince looks like a, an insane card. So a few of the cards might see some changes if the win rate is staying that high, which right now looks like it in rotation at least. And so I'm, I'm interested what they're doing at the end of the month or then maybe next month we will see. Uh, so that is the Midrange Shadowcraft deck and I will now show you also a bit of gameplay if you're looking forward to um, rank up really fast or are going to Grandmaster. Midrange Shadowcraft um, is probably one of the best picks for this month so check it out and now some gameplay is coming so here we go. All right, everybody, so our first match is against the Runecraft, so probably a dirt Runecraft deck. That's the one that you are currently seeing on the ladder, and they're kind of strong, also working pretty good against the midrange Shadowcraft deck, so let's see. Um, I do not like the starting hand, so let's just replace, get a goblin, and nothing to play after. So while the goblin is great, having just a 5 and a, th a 7 drop is definitely not what we like to see. Oh, there, there are some nice 2 drops. Balanos is perfect. Starting with that then. Normally no need to start with the corpse. Magic Illusionist, yeah, he's playing Earthright. So the Dirty Rune. Going for one in the face. Question is now with that on the board. So he's giving us another Earth Sigil. Then you can resummon that. Still going for Balanos. Then Goblin and Corpse on turn three. He's most likely trading here into the... No, he's not. Interesting. Why are you not trading? Because now we can hit this one and still killing one of the units. And also we have a zombie party. As what? So we could potentially use zombie party on this and then kill the unit. As we summoning it, we just drop a goblin. Is that better than just going horse and goblin here? I think not. Let's hit this one. See where the damage is hitting. Okay, on that unit he's keeping them the, the boys on the board, but then we can use the zombie party now on the two and dropping the goblin, which is then good enough to trade into the 2-1. If he's healing right now, that doesn't matter, he's at maximum life, so if he's getting one extra, whatever, who cares. Concentration, healing two, drawing two cards, not dealing two cards, and the witch called drawn, which with that he can draw even more cards, he's getting one life back, but guess what, he's at the maximum amount of points. And we just have the Lurking Corpse. Ooh, that's not too great. And dropping the Underworld Ruler on turn 5 isn't too great either. So uh, we might even use the Evolution here to kill this unit. To keep another unit on the board. Otherwise, it might be a bit painful, our turn 5 right now. Underworld Ruler, that's, that's your finisher normally. So you want to kind of play that on turn 10 with the Necromancy effect. Then you can attack twice and you're evolving, plus you have Storm, so that is 10 in the face, just like that. Dwarf Alchemist, from Earth Essence into his hands, he's evolving, so he has a 3-3. Three, three. Yes, he's killing another Goblin. Cursing Rune, he's not killing the Goblin. 
He's not doing anything, is he? No, he's attacking the corpse. And now it would be great to have something to play. Wouldn't it be a zombie party, underworld ruler? We cannot drop this really. I mean, we could drop it, but it's not helping us. So we will just end the turn. It would be a unit on the board, that's for sure. And a target for opponent to kill. But on the other hand, I totally want to keep that. Hello golem, the three into our face. And this one sucks as well. At the end of his turn, he's getting a random card. Some random effects, we like those. Black Swan. Black Swan, the Black Swan. I'm probably going for Skeleton. A skeleton Prince evolving, killing the Hello Golem. We are currently down to 13 points. He's still getting random stuff at the end of his turn. So there's still a lot of stuff coming. A lot of good random stuff. Mudogenic Bolt at the right time, you could say. So, two damage in each phase. Have the Demon Lord. Uh, Demon Lord is cool, but I kind of like to drop the Immortal thing. I want to wait down here. Plus, we're dealing two damage in this phase. We're pushing another one in this phase. So, down to 15. We're at 9. We're getting one more point from the Flame Rat, so that's 8. Master Mage Levi. Alrighty, time for the Demon Lord. Gonna crush this and think we also... Let's see, we have eight. The ruler will take a while. Uh, let's evolve the big guy as well, kill the two. I do not want to lose the zombie right now. And then we're pushing six more into his face. So he's down to nine. With the amount of stuff we have currently on board, we could kill him next turn. He can still evolve once. And we had six, so it's really close. Another Mutagenic Bolt. So if we would have now another Demon Lord in hand, we would win the game. Unfortunately, that is not the case. So we're going down to three, he's going down to six, and we just need to find three extra points uh, with the Demon Eater. We could still, we could still find Demon Lord, so I would say we're trying that. Gonna hit this. And there is a Demon Lord, so how about we just drop that and go with the remaining six into the base. Our second game is a mirror match and you will face those a lot so the majority of people right now is just playing mid-range Shadowcraft or playing Ramp Dragoncraft in rotation at least. In Unlimited it's a bit of a different story, let's see what we have here, Andre Alphos, Celestial Archer, Balanos. So we're going second, we're dropping the Celestial Archer here, Balanos is a great 2 drop, the Andre Alphos will help us to uh, redraw a lot of cards, so it would be now nice to get a Goblin. For example, we just get another two drop. Well, that's uh, not the greatest, but maybe it's working out. We will see. And there is no goblin on our opponent's side. We also are not getting anything. So just more two drops and a skeleton prince. Uh, in that case, we are just starting with the Balanos here on turn two. He's also doing that. So Balanos into Balanos. And the zombie party. Now we're still dropping Balanos. And he's kind of interested in trading here because he will most likely play something like uh, the ring. And then uh, there are some skeletons on the board and the Balanos here would deal one damage to a random enemy follower. So if there's a skeleton on the board, it totally makes sense for him to trade now instead of just going face. But maybe he will surprise us. He's not surprising us, so there's a trade as expected. And there's a ring as expected. So two skeletons. On the board. And we just get another Balanos. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna drop it here. Plus, we can evolve on the next turn, and the evolution is most likely under Alphos. Necro Assassin. Well done, sir. Please hit the skeleton. There we go. 
Now we just have the problem that the under alphas wouldn't be strong enough to kill the necro assassin. But what we could do is um, just use the zombie party to kill the necro assassin and still evolve in here of course. So that means we you now have the last word effects to draw a card on all the units in our hand. We use the zombie party to kill the necro assassin for as well. He's then we summon something, reanimate. Let's see what that is. It is uh, oh, the And he also has Andrea Alphas. So that will be an evolution, isn't it? I mean, the Andrea Alphas alone is not strong enough to kill our bird. But he's also definitely interested in getting the drawing effect, so that's why he's doing that. So, great trade. Still, both birds on the board. There is a skull ring. Perfect. I like that. I like that a lot. So, we are crushing then the, the double two here. That's better for us. Yeah, that's better. So, we draw an extra card. Get the Mortal Thane. Perfect. Dropping a skull ring. We could use Little Sword Squasher right now to kill the Andre Alphas. But to be honest, it's not the the strongest card here, so we could just use our evolution. I think it, then using a little soul squasher next turn, maybe. When he's evolving again. Using Demon Eater on one of the skeletons, we're drawing another card, because why not? Or even two cards. And um, so Prince Catacomb, that's great. Let's evolve and kill the bird. So he's then also drawing a card, of course. Now you just need to be careful that you're not overdrawing here. We have so many drawing cards in our hand still. So Skeleton Prince, Underworld and Little Soul Special can all draw us more cards. Mm, plus of the board is getting a bit crowded here. We are going for Skeleton Prince on the next turn. I kind of want to keep the evolution for the Immortal Thane. Another option would be just Prince Catacomb and Lurk, hey? Oh yeah, it's the worst card, perfect. Who wins, that's it. That's it. So will it be Skeleton Prince? Can do that. We can trade here. And still having two units on the board. If we go Prince, then we can play Balanus or the Corpse. That's not too bad either. Definitely not too bad. But we need to see how we can set up everything on the board. And if we go Immortal Thane next turn, we still have the evolution. I think we want to go Skeleton Prince. That's just a tiny bit stronger. Then we are trading here into the Necro Assassin. Drawing another card, which is a Goblin, it's cool. We are reanimating here something. And then the next turn Immortal Thane with the last evolution point that we still have. Yeah, he's also going for the Immortal Thane. Evolving the Immortal Thane, hitting one of our units, which is okay. Because we will trade here anyway. So we are using then the small unit to hit this. Getting another Balanos, so there's also Skull Ring. Uh, by the way, the little little Soul Squasher, that would be nice here. We could wait for the Mortal Thane for one more turn. Hitting the, the Mortal Thane for the little Soul Squasher, that's really cheap. That's really cheap, I like that. So maybe we're doing that instead. Yeah, I think so. We're doing that. Gonna hit the white here. Then we're going little soul squasher. Hitting the mortal thing. And then, uh, let's see, let's see. If we go Prince and we're also dropping the, the Goblin, then we have a board full of skeletons. That would be amazing. But also it's kind of then crowded on our board. So we need to be careful with that. And that's why I think we're not doing that. Just dropping the Gourmet Emperor and the Balanos. Our Demon Lord coming. So he's summoning two zombies. Which is a killing two units. And that's totally fine for us. Which one 
do you crush the Balanus? So one damage on the Demon Lord, that's also the King of course. It's fine, so we will then go for the Immortal Thane now. Oh, Zombie Party is also cool, but we are still going for the Immortal Thane. Dropping that here. Then getting to White's, hitting the King. Going again for a hit. Boom, boom, boom. That's two in the face. That's another two in the face. So he's getting four in total right now. We can also drop with the Goblin. We still, we, hope we still have one left. And then I think we're using the last evolution point to kill the Demon Lord. And because we now have such a wonderful strong board, it will be tough for our opponent to come back. Plus we have 10 shadows in the in the graveyard here. So in two turns, the underworld is coming as well, which is dealing 10 on the face. There's another immortal plane, but he cannot evolve anymore. So we can decide how we are trading. So we're still dealing damage then. We can use the goblin, for example. Ooh, zombie party. I was still dealing damage in your face, sir. Ooh, and that's a black swan. Are we going for the black swan here? I don't think so. I personally don't think so. What we can do is hit the white here with our small goblin. And we have, for example, the zombie party. That can then crush this one, for example. Trade, hit, hit, hit. The white's definitely coming. So, and then uh, maybe the corpse. We're just setting up lethal now. So we're gonna trade into that. Base, base, base. That is another two. You're getting one. That's all right. Gonna hit the white. Gonna trade the white. Going now on the king here as well. And we're dropping our king. And we are dropping the orbs as well. But with the board as it is, we already kind of have enough to kill him. But because we have the underworld ruler in our hand, we totally have enough. We're still at 11 shadows. So he now kind of needs a miracle. He needs some healing. And he needs to kill the whole board. And if he's killing the whole board, well, we still have the Lurking Corpse. So that's potentially killing then whatever he has there. So if he's also playing the Odile here, the Black Swan, he could kill a lot, but not everything. Because the effect from the Black Swan is just happening at the end of the turn. And then he's dealing two damage to all enemies. So he cannot uh, use the Black Swan and then trade into the White King. Because then, of course, the Black Swan is also dying. So normally the game at this point is over. And there is really not much he can do. So there's a King. Yeah, as expected. There's a Skull Ring. And that's it. Oh, a Demon Lord. Okay. With the Demon Lord, you can trade a bit. Go for that. Okay, so then maybe kill one of the zombies. But we, we are still winning the game. Doesn't matter. We still have enough on the board. So we're using the, the corpse here. Hit that. Then if he's not crushing that, see, we can just do that. Then we have two for the face. He's at nine and then the underworld is coming. As a 5-4 with Storm that it can attack twice. So that is exactly what we need. And with that we are winning this game as well. GG sir.